A few months ago, I made a wood screen door to surprise my wife when she returned from a work trip. Then I decided to make it a little more custom to our taste than just a wood frame with a standard window screen. So I carved some banana leaves in three panels to fill the spaces where the screen would have gone. This video is less about the making of the door, which is just a bunch of parts butt jointed and fixed with glue and floating tenons, and more about making and carving the panels. I started by cutting the panels to fit inside the frame of the door, with a bit of wiggle room for the wood to expand during the humid week. I set the height of the blade to 3 8 of an inch and the left side of the blade so that it was 3 8 of an inch from the fence. Then I cut a rabbit all around the panels using the table saw. With the panels face down, I made all the long cuts first, then using a miter gauge, made the cuts on the end. This is a safe operation because there's no cutoff being produced. I then adjusted the fence to the width of the rabbit I needed, and to help keep the boards up against the fence, I used a feather board, then cut away the waste. Note the offcut is free to move on the left side of the blade and not trapped between the fence and the blade. I make this cut all the way around the panels. I could have done this on the router table, but the table saw produces much less dust. After the rabbits are cut, the panels drop into place. Now the creativity begins. So pulling from that, I began sketching some banana leaves on the panels. Much like the writing process, this involves some scribbling, erasing, more scribbling and erasing, and a lot of smudging since I'm left-handed. Like a sculptor, I'm just letting the subject reveal itself so I know what to remove later. I know these clips are long, but I want you to see how I came up with the design, so relax and enjoy the process. I start with a core box bit in the router to shape the concave of the stems. Banana leaves grow much like grass, so the leaves are rolled. I hog away the majority of the material and then come back later with a carving gouge to clean up the cuts. Yeah, I'm carving into unsupported grain here, but I had a fair amount of cleanup to do, so I wasn't too worried. Now using a small straight bit, I set the cutting depth to a little over a quarter of an inch and freehand route all the background to make the banana leaves now proud of the surface. While routing material away like this, be sure to pay attention to the rotation of the bit in relation to the cut. A climb cut could cause the router to grab the workpiece and jump out of your hands, which could cause damage to the project or worse, yourself. I felt like carving a fold in the tip of a leaf to give a little more detail. I'm not an experienced carver, so I tried my best to carve with the grain to avoid tear out. My goal was to be able to finish the panels without needing to sand, so sharp tools and good grain reading was important. I tried a few different tools to carve this detail. I wanted there to be some undercutting, so I used some conical burrs in the rotary tool 
but that was not long lasting, so I stuck with the hand tools and settled for a less is more approach. To texture the background, I first used a quarter inch ball mill followed by this eighth inch ball mill set to 20,000 RPM in a Ryobi rotary tool. The small one you see here was used to get close to the edges and into tight spaces. I just moved along and lightly touched the surface. Some spots burned, but I did go back over them and cleaned it up. This process was really fun and didn't take nearly as long as I had anticipated. I was delighted with the result, as you see here. Now for the leaves. Though this isn't the actual workpiece, this is a sample that I practiced on. I used a gouge to scoop away the material starting at the stem and moving out to the edges of the leaves. For some spots, I started at the edges to make the leaf have a convex surface for more depth in the carving. I'd carve for a couple minutes and then strop the gouge to bring the sharp edge back. The cuts were very clean, even cross grain, so no sanding was necessary. Mission accomplished. To finish the panels, I flooded the surface with a sponge brush with diluted Epiphanes Outdoor Varnish. The background collected a lot of varnish, so the sponge was used to absorb it and move it around. If the finish were allowed to pool, it not only would take a long time to cure, but it would have a thick, crackled plastic look. Not a good thing. I applied two diluted coats and one full strength coat. The door received the same treatment. I dig the curl in the wide kick plate of this door. A video link to my finishing process will be here for you if you want more information about that. The cool thing about Epiphane's varnish is you just need to brush it on and leave it. It'll level out nicely as it dries. I made some strips of wood to act like a frame, and to hold them all in place, I used screws with cup washers. I chose to use copper screen instead of the standard window screen. Copper and banana leaves remind me of Kailua Beach on the windward side of Oahu, one of my favorite places. The screen was pulled tight, stapled in place, and the framing was attached in the same fashion as shown previously. Now copper screen and satin nickel or black and white hardware didn't sit well with me. So I bought some hardware, primed it, painted it copper, 
and sprayed a clear coat on it all. The hinges, screws, the handle, and the closing mechanism all got this treatment. This isn't a security door, it's simply a door to cover the front door, so I didn't install a latch. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell notification for more cool videos.